bit of an NLP direction this week. Tony Robbins' use is chunking. I don't know if you're going to use it in the same way. The story helps give context as to why it bears that that answer. That was a poo interview, wasn't it? He was people. too scared we to interview do. me, though. He didn't. He backed out. He didn't want to interview me. <laughs> did he back out? Did he? <laughs> no, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Do Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast with my very good friends, Jose Neuer, Ryan Boniface. How are you this week, guys? I swear you promised to change up that intro. I did, but I feel quite, <laughs> quite comfortable with it. Sorry, oh, let's try okay. again. No, no, Inspiration no, 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 Nation, no, no. we are here for another week. Ryan, Joe, in the house. How are we doing, guys? Awful. Okay. Awful. Let's... I was like some Radio 2 DJ. Let's go back to how it was. Yeah, yeah. See, you never want to change things up too much. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, we, I'm good. Thank we are, you. We won't do what we used yeah. to do when we We're used good. to come round here on a Sunday and record three episodes and pretend it was a new week. We are back to back in. So those who are listening last week, we are minutes from that last recording. It is still the hottest day of the year. <laughs> who knows? In that. the last two weeks, maybe there's been an even hotter day. Who knows what's happened? Hopefully, everything yeah. we say is still relevant in the two weeks that has passed. Thank yeah. you, everyone, joining us on TikTok, following us through, or joining us new every single week on a Tuesday. Just follow Joe J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. He's on every day. We'll sign post when we are going live, and you can get the podcast before it comes out. Interact, ask questions. It's all fantastic stuff. I really do enjoy this TikTok TikTok element to the show. <laughs> I have to say, Joe, as well. Is it well, but look. So. When- well, when when you when you guys went here that time that solo one, they were my like they were my like co-presenter. We were co-presenting with TikTok. That's what happened. Awesome stuff. I love it. I think again, everyone out there on socials, at to listen to N, listen T O I N. Give us the support. We're on a march to three thousand followers over there. I've been a bit lax in the last year or so. I am back on the horse again now, so we are driving that up, and we appreciate all the support. Just another way of helping us get the message out there, and of course. Joe on his march to 10,000 on TikTok, go and support that. We'd appreciate that as well. Lovely. Right. Joe is throwing back from last week the baton of conversation to myself. See, I've replaced the wheel of a baton now. That's two weeks in a row. It may stick, it may not. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go in a little bit of an NLP direction this week. Ooh. And I was thinking about this. When we started the podcast, Joe, what it's become is nothing like what I thought it was. Because this is Ooh. very much our self-development journal, isn't it? We, you know, we talk about where we are with things. We all put our different slight slant on it. I very much fell into talking about kind of um, wellness and mindfulness, things that are really apparent in my mind right now. And, you, you know, you're here over the podcast. We talk about this a lot, probably do a journey update at some point. But I don't think I'd be doing a lot of the stuff I do or live my life the way I do now if it wasn't for this and the kind of self propelling coaching we've done for ourselves and for each other throughout this um, it's been a really really valuable tool I don't journal we know this this is this is my journal and I think it's been really useful but one of my things was like oh I know loads of things about running meetings and presentations and shaping people's behaviors and coaching and I can impart all this wisdom in the world and after about three episodes I ran out of all of that so we then started to move on from things but I'm going to go back in that direction a bit and I want to talk about an NLP technique this week okay um because i've got from you joe from other people on this podcast in work outside of work i always get whether it's true or not i'll say people can have their own opinion but i get a lot of praise about my ability to interview people either like this sort of thing a podcast interview or you know interviews in a uh, worky sense of bringing people in i'm quite good at drawing information out from people making them feel relaxed etc etc at least that's what i'm told if you think that's bull poo that's fine tell me back to last week's show there's a bit of toxicity out there it has to happen it makes me get better at what i do but on that one of the techniques that i use for interviews and again on this or in rooms or when I'm running meetings at work, it's a technique from an LP called chunking. And I don't know if you know about chunking, if you know what that involves at all. I'll ask quickly before I'm going to explain it anyway, whether you say yes or no. no I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I think Tony Robbins use is chunking. I don't know if you're going to use it in the same way. Oh, I don't know. I don't like Tony Robbins. You banned me on Twitter. Well, you do love Tony Robbins. He just, he just banned you on Twitter. That was all, wasn't it? <laughs> That's true. That is true. I do love him. He does fantastic stuff. <laughs> um, so chunking and it's is i find it useful because it's a low preparation technique and back to winging it episodes way back in the archives now people they might even be in like the 20s um i like a bit of winging it 
So, and, and I'm going to illust- I'm not going to tell you what chunking is. I'm going to illustrate it, and then we'll talk it through. So, first of all, Joe, I'm going to interview you in a non-chunking way, and I'll put out there oh. that I haven't prepared this other than a brief thought in my head. So this might go off form. Okay. Joe, what did you do today? Uh, I, was, I was at work. I did some meetings. Um, I was doing support um, today uh, on the podcast today, it's right now. Very interesting. What's your favourite song? My favourite song is You'll Be Found. I love it. I love it. And who's your favourite football team? Tottenham. Woohoo! <laughs> Those on, let me find it. Those on the YouTube. Mighty, mighty Tottenham Hotspur. There we go. My Yay. Fantasy. As for that, I'm very fair weather. I couldn't even tell you a single player, but I like to Can't be associated with this. Oh, he's turned his camera off. <laughs> My camera's Ryan's off. protesting. <laughs> I can't be associated with this. He's protesting oh. now. Other than that last bit there where I made it interesting through football banter, that was a poo interview, wasn't it? It was rubbish. Just ask some random questions. Didn't yeah, just, go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, I, I, there's there. no connection with anything. Yeah. Okay. Right, Ryan. Yes. I'm now going to interview you about something I know nothing about, which could be a wide range of subjects. Okay. Join us on the podcast today is Ryan Miguel Boniface. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Ryan is a huge, huge snooker fan. So what is it, Ryan, that you really enjoy about the art of snooker? Um, I think it's the it's the mental it's the mental game right it's not a, not as much a physical game kind of like a football or a rugby or um you could argue maybe a tennis because there's a lot of running and things like that you, know, you walk around a 12 by 6 table a few times but it's it's about the constant rhythm and um consistent thought process and concentration drive um so That's it's really not, interesting who, yeah who do you like current players, old or new, who do you kind of attribute that really plays that mental game really well? And you, you know, you like watching or you despise to when you play on a consistent basis. I mean, you have to look at people that that most people would know. So, Stephen Hendry, Steve Davis, Ronnie O'Sullivan, um, to name three people that I imagine the three of you would recognise as people that don't know the game at all. But they're they're people that play the game in a different way. All three of them. Steve Davis was known as being boring. Ronnie O'Sullivan's known as being the flamboyant out there one, and Stephen Hendry was known as just being Mr. Consistent, right? So they all play the game in a different way, but, that, but they still derive the same results. They're still multiple world champions. They've still won multiple events. They've still won loads of money in the game. And that's starts some of the beauty as well, is that there isn't a singular way to play it. There, there's a textbook way to play the game, but that isn't the only way to play the game, and that's what they bring out. And which one of those, like you said, you gave quite a range of techniques there. The boring, and I do know that's the one I know, I think. The flamboyant and the straight down the middle. Which which one of those do you... And I know you said they all give results, but what yeah. one gives the best type of game, do you think? And, you know, for you as, from a, a, from a, as a fan perspective, yeah. um, the, flamboyant, the flamboyant play style is the way, that, the way that attracts kind of neutrals and lovers of the game to enjoy how the game is played. Um, Perfect. We'll draw a line there. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. We might do a real interview on snooker one day because you're well into that there. But I know nothing about snooker. But I think you'd have to agree. And that was all of the cuff. We didn't prep this. Neither of you guys know that was happening. That was a much better interview than what I did with Joe. Yeah. Yes. And actually, I knew the answers to those things. I was asking Joe about as well. So I was more prepared. But what I did, and I, I, I'll talk for a bit of it now, but the chunking, which I find is a really, really fantastic technique, is you start off, and it's you, you imagine it, so you start off at the top layer and you ask a very broad, open question. And then based on that answer, you ask a question that's a bit more specific to that answer. You draw in one bit of what you said. So you talked about the fact that you enjoy the mental game, so I asked you for some examples of the mental game. So I chunked down the level. And then you gave some examples of players and I asked you and their, their behaviours. So I asked you which of those behaviours we chunk down another level. And what we, you know, I could keep going on that where we then break down that player's behaviours and how it impacts other things, how it looked to you as a fan. And you, you chunk down and you chunk down and you chunk down, drawing out the information and getting more specific. And that's, that's what's called chunking down. 
you can then also chunk up. So we might hit a brick wall. I might be like, I've got nowhere to go with this now. We've got as far as we can get in that conversation. So I chunk up and I might go up one level if there was like a second thing in the next level up we talked about. I might go all the way back to the top and ask another very broad open question and you start to chunk down. You can do what's called chunking, chunking sideways as well where you, you jump across topics. So which especially at the top level where you talked about that, I might be then ask. So, what was it like when you've played? And we go from who you observe to who you play and chunk down on that and chunk back up. And it's a, I find that's a really, really useful technique for, I say, any situation where you're doing an interview or a presentation where you're trying to draw information out. Because quite often, not so much if it's like, well, even actually, I can say, if it, even if it's an interview on the podcast or it's a work interview, you need to find something out from someone. And through chunking, you can almost lead them in that direction. Again, from the broad, so you're not just like, what do you like? Oh, thanks, done, moving on. You start broad and you get them to explain it and then you kind of laser focus more and more and more on that thing. It's the same, you know, techniques, when, when people do sales, they use these sort of techniques. It works really well in that sort, that way, where you get people to choose their way, but you get to, again, steer them in that, that direction. Um, and I, I remember reading about this years ago and I was very, like you do go through the stages, I was very conscious, competent, Remember, guys, when I drew the stages on, it was the wall over here, and we've got that yeah. way back and like podcast 15, 16, something like that, I think. That's just before I went out of techniques. But I was very like, right, I'm going to practice this. I'm going to give it a go. And now I do it without thinking. It's my general conversational style. But I went through those steps to practice it, get better at it, be aware I was doing it. And now it's it's very natural. And it's I've said before that you could throw me in a room and say, look, Lee, 200 people here, we need you to talk about black, go and do it. And it's because of techniques like that, that I know I can go straight into it. You don't have to prepare. You, you engage people by engaging in a conversation, but there's a structure to it. So it doesn't just whirl all over the place. Does that Love all, it. I, I hate saying, does that make sense? Because I don't, you know, I don't think I'm saying anything so technical. It doesn't. I just want to make sure I've not waffled on too much. So no, no, good. it does. Do you like that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. like that a lot. One of my USPs, as you know, and I spoke to you a bit about this recently, Joe, I really want to push myself in this whole podcast presenting direction. It's something I really want to try and get to more. You guys know I've branched out. I've done a couple of separate podcasts at BP Financial Pod on Twitter. If you want to check out some of my fantastic work, don't shake your head, guys. I was still here. I'm, I'm, cop- I'm, I'm going with Ryan on this one. I'm going with Ryan. <laughs> but um, I, I want to go down that direction. Um, I also, you know, I like presentations. I like doing them in work. I'd like to get into that almost as a sidebar thing of working outside of it. So actually, if that's what I want to do, and I think I'm very good at it, why am I now telling you guys how I do it? So you can go off and do the same thing. Does that not seem crazy? No. Not to me. I actually think it's a good thing. And why is that? Because you're you're passing on for me. It's like... I'm learning learning something that's that's new that you do that's useful for me, and actually, I will give you credit for it. I would give you credit for it, so it almost enhances your your brand. Um, you know, oh, I learned this from Lee, and 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 you have to talk about it because I'll be talking about it. That's that's, and also I feel helped. If I feel helped, then then it it's helped both of us really. But I will always give credit for credits for you, credits due. So that's why that's why I think it's good. I wouldn't I like give you credit for it because I'm a scumbag. <laughs> I love it. But as you as you know, Ryan, if you come to me with a question, there's always a story of something that follows it as to why I'm going to give you the answer you're going to give. And you're like, Jesus Christ, Lee, I only wanted a quick answer. I want to find three hours later. True, true. I don't think it that way, though. But I think the story helps give context as to why it bears that that answer. And I do think, I think it's a really strong leadership technique to not be afraid of, you know, there's a, the old school thing, knowledge is power. I'll hold on to it. And I'll just dispense my bits of knowledge. That's a terrible trait. You should Agreed. enable people Agreed. to be their best person. Someone I was talking to who actually was one of my mentors many years ago that I've, I've started talking to quite regularly talked about a lifting the lid off sort of person said that, you know, like you, you like to lift the lids, let people be there for themselves. And I think that's really, really important. And in fact, if there's someone who's going to be better than you and stuff, you shouldn't be afraid of that. You should encourage that. Yes. And you can then, you can grow with them or you can use them to support you. You know, more people is better. You can even then 
learn from them which is like the best version of that 100%. you can possibly get which is absolutely fantastic yeah. and there's, there's two key messages which are the actual messages this show isn't really about chunking chunking was just to get the, the example out there of throwing out a technique um, one is exactly that message is never be afraid of sharing what you do and like joe said it's you're you're better in the world it's a positive trait you should do that and the more you do it the more people do it. you we should all learn together we should all grow together we shouldn't be afraid of holding on to because someone if they don't learn it from you they'll learn it somewhere else you should focus your energy in getting better and making people better not holding on to stuff but the second thing and the big message behind it is i also think that there's a part although i've got that technique i've then absorbed that into me and put my spin on it and no no matter what i can't teach someone to be me as much as i try you can't do that and that's the mm. same for you ryan same for you joe same for everyone watching and listening there, there will be something that you bring to everything that is unique to you, that's your personality, it's your drive, it's your fire. And actually that is really, really powerful. So you, all these techniques are really good. Learning your skills are good. Um, looking at people as, you know, mentors or aspirational figures and taking a want to do all of that is really, really good. But there is something inside you that you layer in it. And I just think it's important people don't lose sight of that uniqueness of them and I think that's part of me and I've, I've been accused as I'm doing now sometimes I'm waffling with it and I go too much but I also think I bring a passion and energy to what I mm. do that layered in with the techniques is what will get me to where I want to be with things and I think that's the same for everyone is I just think in terms of again back to NLP and framing devices it's really important to understand your strengths and your weaknesses and to be able to work with them and harness them or work around them and I think that Unus, whatever you bring in your personality and your fire is a really really important thing to be consciously aware of because the more you are the more you can develop and um and my last my closing bit on this before i do finish the lead waffle is years ago i had a, a it was a, a plan for saying i was going to roll out and i went through it with someone and they were like aren't you worried that someone else is just going to do this and they were like you know you'll share you'll you'll you're brainstorming this idea of a few different people um and then they were like Oh no, because this is you, isn't it? And that, and they saw that that yes, there was there was a plan of paper, there was something written out, but but actually delivering that was going to come from my energy and my fire, mm. which I think like, again that's lays through this with the interviewing thing, things I've done in work, things I've done outside of work, things I'm going to do in the future, and I think everyone has that, and I think it's it's very easy to forget that, and I think it's I said I know I've said it already, but it's a strength to hold on to that, and that's. That is the inspiration that I wanted to impart this week. It's great. I love it. I love the whole thing because I'm totally on board with you about the sharing thing. Give without take, actually doing it because you want to do it. And I think you don't need to shout about yourself because other people are going to shout about you. That's the best way. That's the best way. Yeah, you know, because you're doing good things. And I think, you know, I, I agree. You've got to share information. And actually, let's be honest, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? We learn something of someone, we pass it on. So we pass, everybody's passes on. This stuff probably goes back to, you know, I know it's Richard Bandler, John Grindon, Richard Bandler, inventors of NLP, got a couple of their books. You know, they're the guys who invented it. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants, but that's how humans evolved. So, so you, didn't you recommend a book a couple of weeks ago, Joe, from a Greek philosopher, and those lessons yeah. still stand in true now. Like you said, these... <laughs> These things often aren't new. They're taught and passed on and refined and developed. And like you said, Lee, but they're done through the uniqueness of you, like for your values and beliefs, the things that you, the, the suffering that you've been through. And it's your, that's why it's unique. When you pass that on, you're adding your bit, but then they take it on, they, they absorb it, then they pass on their uniqueness and they use their strengths to enhance it. That's what I think is the beauty of this is that they use their strengths to enhance whatever that is that you're going to give them. Um, I've had it countless of times when I've ran teams, you know, like, like you've run teams, like Ryan's running teams. I used to run teams and I used to love that. I used to love when people used to like really succeed and used to give me, used to fill me up, you know? It's just, it's just nothing like it. It's nothing. I don't know why people want to keep hold of information because I know people are scared. Uh, people get scared. If I, if I, if I let this up, people are going to get it. But let's be honest, ideas are cheap. Ideas are really, really cheap because no one's going to execute like Lee. No one's going to execute like Ryan. And actually, people don't necessarily don't usually execute at all. <laughs> they don't execute ideas. They have a brilliant idea, but it doesn't get off the plate because they go, oh, I'm bored. 
it's just a, your drive will get it off. Your drive will get that idea going. And like a Lee idea will be driven by a Lee and a Ryan idea will be driven by it because you're passionate, you want to use it. You could, and the good thing is to share it because you'll get either ideas and things like that. And, um, and if people do steal the idea, it won't be the same idea. It'll be a, an idea, but it'll be a different, different version of it. It won't be the same. It'll be different. And it won't be the Lee version, it'll be the Ryan version. It'll be whoever's version. But ideas are cheap. It's all about the action. Anyway, Ryan, over to you. No, I think what you said is 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 pretty good, both of you. I think, I've, you know, I do a lot of interviews with work now and um, obviously have my own techniques for doing things. And I know this, this NLP thing does, excuse me, doesn't specifically relate to kind of work interviews, but they're definitely techniques that you can take away and you can learn from. Um, and I think sharing that knowledge is is what kind of makes people better. You know, if the whole world acted as if, um, you know, I've got the knowledge, I'm not going to pass it on to anyone, then no one would ever progress from any job they've ever done. Um, yeah. You know, having people that, that give you advice or give you support or give you information uh, uh, are pivotal to you improving yourself and therefore do you not get a good feeling or do you not feel better about yourself when you bring other people up with you? Because um, that's what you should be aiming for. I certainly do. I get a buzz out of it. I've, I just feel it's fantastic when you see someone winning and you maybe just, you just, you know, they've, they've done something. You might have just helped out a little bit, but they've grabbed the bat on like really said and they run with it and they're doing great. It's fantastic. It's nothing. I don't think it's a better feeling. I think when you serve other people, I don't think it's a better feeling. I can't, I just, it's just something that's amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Ryan. And that's why you're a leader, right? because you're doing it this is the thing you love right it's the thing we enjoy of course it's our first leaders that are difficult but so why do it right growing people growing he was people, too scared to interview do. me though he didn't he backed out he didn't want to interview me <laughs> did he back out did he <laughs> no i, I don't remember too much already i don't remember do anymore. that's so funny that's so funny. <laughs> he's never he's never wanted to interview me though i'm not scared you scare off. I can't handle the raw power that he's right. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. No, I think this has been really good, guys. I think it has. And it reminds me of your technique a bit of like coaching where you're like trying to find out the root cause of things. There's a model called score, which I talked about in the previous podcast, that chunking thing you're talking about, like the symptoms, but the symptoms aren't the actual cause of what's going on. Actually going down into subject matter and actually finding out more about it. It's a great competency interview technique as well about finding out what people know about the thing. So they've not done the thing, then they'll soon dry up about it. So people can't really, they can't, I'm going to swear now, I'm going to swear, they're going to show, show you, they can't bullshit that type of interview Whoa. because... Whoa. <laughs> They can't bullshit that type of interview because if you do a good competency-based interview, they won't be able to tell you how they've done it. If they've not done it, they won't be able to go into the detail and minutia of it. But if you've done it, you'll know exactly how it's done. So there you go. I really like that, by the way. That's very good. But there you go. That's my little two pennies worth. Perfect. Thank you, guys, for your input on that. As you know, I like my third week where I get to spill some crazy thoughts out of my head. Hopefully that's given a bit of inspiration to people. I do generally believe what I talk about and what I say. So... Hopefully that helps people as that is what we're here to do. Help and inspire. Um, again, follow us on social media at listen to AN, listen to OIN, search out Joe on TikTok, Jay Noyer underscore inspiration nation. He is on there every day and you can watch us recording live the podcast each and every Tuesday, except next Tuesday, which is why we did two recordings this week. Lovely. Um, inspirationnation.org.uk. Follow us. So uh, head over there, t-shirts, mugs, coaching service etc etc i've reached to get my mug but it's far too hot right now joe's filling in for us if you're on i'll the do YouTube. it i'll do it i'll do it thanks it. jose appreciate that's it right. that's all um, right and we'll be back next week Count us down. Give, give a quick chat to page page has just joined thank you page thank you for joining another regular on the pod or regular on the live just wanted to give her a shout out so there you go thanks to gwen lee us down absolutely thank you we appreciate all the support over there um, and just Clarky as well has stuck with us the entirety of two podcasts. We massively appreciate that. Thank you very, very awesome. much. And for all the likes, if you want to get involved, head over again. Jay Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. I said it so many times, I forgot what I'm saying. It's too hot. I'm going to go and collapse in a minute. Happy Three, birthday two, to Paige, by the way. Happy birthday to Paige. Happy birthday. Oh, sorry, but it's Happy birthday. It's coming on TikTok. <laughs> Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys yeah. later.
<laughs> so I want to know now what's your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to hashtag it with Inspiration Nation in the comments below and make sure you commit to action. Thank you for checking out. So don't forget to catch all our other Inspiration Nation podcast episodes right over here. So go check them out. And also, don't forget to subscribe because that will tell you when your next video goes live by you hitting that amazing bell. So until next time, it's Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.